Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit those follow buttons no matter where you're listening. Not only does it help us out, but you'll know exactly when we have another one brewing. It's spooky time, and what better way to break the ice with 1993's Hocus Pocus. What did you think? For a almost direct reskin of Ernest Scared Stupid, I gotta say <laughs> yeah. this was the worst Quidditch match I've ever seen. Oh. I mean, it was pretty slow. Usually they fly by pretty quickly. This is a 90-minute Quidditch match. If you can't catch that golden snitch, what are you going to do? Catch that <laughs> golden bitch. Oh! <laughs> All right, so, yeah, this is Hocus Pocus. Everybody knows what we're talking about. You know, they're they're coming out with the new one. But, yeah, this is a movie that I saw. I didn't see it in theaters, but I definitely saw it in my youth. And uh, then didn't see it again until I was probably, like, 25 or 30. What about you? Well, that was what I was going to bring up because this is definitely a movie that is firmly seated in like millions of people's nostalgia and it's just not in mine. Even though I was, I'm a 90s baby, I just, I saw it once. I was like, ah, okay. I decided to pick it just to see like what I thought about it 30 some years later. I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, the wife and kid, they, you know, he grew up watching this with her. She's a huge fan. I watched Ernest Scared Stupid with him because... <laughs> It's the superior Halloween spooktacular. <laughs> I love Ernest Scared Stupid. Don't get me wrong, but I was pleasantly surprised with Hocus Pocus, to be honest. Okay, I'm glad it's not just me being a defender of this. Like, I'm not saying this is a great film, but it's a great Halloween film. Like, if you got some kiddos, this is perfect. I was just surprised how much of an easy watch it was. It's kind of charming. It's kind of funny. A little cringe sometimes, but like it passes pretty briefly at the beginning. I think what I enjoyed the most were the uh, the witch sisters. I forgot what they were called, but I feel like they were having a fuck ton of fun. Yes. When the Sandersons are on yeah. screen, they're definitely the highlight of this film. Bette Midler and them, the way they cast their spells and things like that, are super fun. Like, Midler will come in and she's got this really cool musical number, and then she's accompanied by Meth Out Sherry Moon Zombie and <laughs> Meth Out Rich Lake. Oh. No. Oh, fucking hatchet face. Wait, <laughs> did you say messed out Sherry Moon Zombie as if well, the actual Sherry, Sherry Moon Zombie? Zombie. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a little redundant. <laughs> you and I, Brady, we agree. This is probably the most attractive I have ever found Sarah Jessica Parker in any role. 100%. I think I'm just a sucker for cosplay girls, and she's just a slutty witch. And I'll go, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, honestly, though, it's not that high of a bar. But, yeah, undeniably, this is... That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. <laughs> He's like, I was looking at Hatchet Face a couple times. I can't lie. It wasn't my fault the camera cut. Oh, no! But, yeah, we have Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Raphael, whatever her name is, and Kathy Nadimi. Is that... Is that the other one's name? I think she was originally, if I remember right, originally supposed to be Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, no. Yeah. Ooh, damn. Yeah, <laughs> they big made, oof. They made a good choice by going with the unknown, I feel like. No kidding. She throwing koosh balls at people. Ugh. Oh, man, her show? Damn, I remember that. 90s are wild, man. Which is exactly where this is. So, just to get it out of the way, it is just like Ernest Scared Soup. Instead of summoning a demon, they summon the Sanderson sisters. And we follow these kids, and they're not bad. They're, they're actually pretty good actors, but man, the whole movie hinges on this boy who's like, what, 13, 14? He's, he's like 16. I think that it says that he's 16. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. So we'll say 15 or 16. At every corner, he just gets backhanded by any kind of dialogue. It's like, what, you're a virgin, dude? What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the movie starts out with a scene that doesn't really matter. Oh, a girl's soul gets trapped or whatever. His uh, a boy gets his soul trapped in a cat. That doesn't matter. We'll get to that later. But the main characters of this, yeah, the main boy just this guy's a virgin. I bet he's gonna light that candle, isn't he? Ha, dude, virgin. What the fuck? I bet you never even snorted a titty. What the uh... fuck, dude? His little sister's there smoking a cigarette like, I got more pussy than him. <laughs> Lady from Beetlejuice at the end. <laughs> yeah, fucking she works at uh, public services or whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, when this movie is going, it's whatever. She, to me, is literally one of my biggest detractions in this film. She has a scene 
where she screams for like three seconds just to be an asshole. And they leave it in the film and she's just fucking screaming. And to this day, I still fucking hate that scene. That's one of the cringe moments that I had mentioned earlier because it seemed like I get why she did it in the movie just to be just a jerk. But like for some reason, it comes across too fucking well. I'm just like, ugh, enough. I don't yes. even remember that. You blocked it out and good for you. I Traumatized. Do. Do <laughs> Traumatized. But those kids that we're talking about, especially the boy, you know, he's, he's a California kid. He just moved over here to Salem and he's just such a West Coast dude. He is too fucking cool. Now, I will give this guy credit. Sure, he hasn't gotten laid. He still has got the V card. It's in his wallet. It's chained to his fucking belt. I get it. But the thing is, he gets into a little bit of a kerfuffle in his classroom. It's between the other main character we're talking about, the little girl. And it winds up him just standing up in class and straight up giving her his phone number. I was like, damn, big dick move. Oh, dude, yes. And BDE, for sure, he's like, I may be getting punked right now, but you're going to be getting pumped later. And she's like, oh, if you want a virgin, I might believe that. And he was like, shit. <laughs> she, yeah, it, it starts out from an argument or not an argument like a class discussion yeah. about the sanderson witches or whatever the whole story about that and he's like oh that's just a bunch of baloney you know i'm from <laughs> california we don't believe in witches you know a, as normal people are you know yeah no one buries a troll under a tree and says ernest is gonna let it loose when he's bangs on it three times and says Come forth, ye witch whores. Oh, nice. He just fucking leans back, craps open, uh, Miak. Yes. Oh, the Bulgarian Miak. Damn. What is the uh, the parallel to the Bulgarian Miak here? Come. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Some of that punk stupid ring can have dance. Oh, uh, you might Oh, like... yeah. Good point. That fucking dance, though. We'll, we'll get to it, but I like how it's happening in the background the entire time. It's like, are they are they good? Are they okay? No. They about to dance themselves clean of their oh. lives. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Yeah. This it's fucking thing. Yeah. Now, <laughs> old boy has to go do whatever. He's got to go home, and he's like, ah, I got your number. I'm feeling fucking high on life. And him being a virgin, God has to punish him. So on his way home, <laughs> on his way home, some bullies are like, I'm just going to take your shoes. And he's like, oh man, I was just trying to throw my bike in the river and shit. It's an odd moment because they, these are clearly like 30 year old high school students. And they're doing that same spiel you see in every 90s movie where they're just like, dude it out. And they're just trying to fucking be like the boss of the situation. I'm like, man, this guy, like, absolutely snap back every time he had something to say to be honest i kind of wanted him just to walk away and be like fucking take these shoes yeah like these guys are basically two out of the three members of airheads i don't oh. know what you do. can choose whatever you want but one of them wants to refer to himself as ice but like i mean he did have it shaved in the back of his head i was like damn dude if he only had, like, a fucking Raptors jacket on or whatever, this oh, would be, like, peak fucking 90s. Yes. Yeah. Or, or, like, a Carolina shit. Panther. Well, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say the Raptors didn't exist in 93. <laughs> oh, let me uh, let me edit that in. <laughs> Carolina Panthers jersey. Or jacket. The Carolina Panthers didn't exist in 93 either. What was the fucking blue The, the Charlotte shit. Hornets. It's the Charlotte Hornets. Brady was right. I'll just leave it. <laughs> Resident sports expert here. Ted Lasso. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I love it all. Uh, meanwhile, he gets home, and we're treated to another earnest scene, except for this time, instead of laying in his bed and getting surprised by a potential troll, he has a troll in his uh, closet watching him voyeuristically as he dry humps his pillow. Yes, and let me tell you, she cut it extremely close. Because, yeah. like, he goes in his room, he's, like, already in the, like, you know what? I'm baiting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I think that was a good decision to just jump out and be like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm here. It's it's your eight-year-old sister. Uh, don't do anything weird, please, you virgin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then again, he had a pretty hard day, so it could have been, like, one of those angry evening just come home pants already off just like <laughs> <laughs> go into my room <laughs> uh, 
Detective Doofy. Yeah. Detective Doofy. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Oh, but no, no, no. The movie's much more cordial. Good. Good for the movie. And I kind of like the little rapport that they have. It, it seemed pretty genuine. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, they're a brother and a sister that have had their good times, their bad times. You can kind of tell that. But they seem to be on pretty good terms for the most part. And what do you do when you have your bad times? You scream, the old days are dead, and you turn into animals from the Muppets and go fucking ham on your drums. Oh, yeah. man, that was also... You know what that reminded me of? That fucking bullshit scene from Empire Records we covered? Yes. Oh, yeah. I was just oh, like, yeah. oh, man, he's just like that angry boss who just needs to let it out. Fuck, man, ACDC time. He just suddenly turns into Scott Stapp. So oh. Scott, Scott Stapp can't play drums either. Oh, I was going to say- cat food at the Motel 6 by the grace of God. Oh. Man, this movie went downhill fast. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Only is he a virgin, he's got to fucking choke down some fucking fancy feast. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't no. even get the kind with the gravy. Oh, oh, no. It's just like Vienna wieners for fucking cats. Oh. Vienna wieners for fucking cats. <laughs> let's move on. Oh. Yeah, let's just go back to how bad his drums were. Oh, it wasn't that bad, but I thought it was pretty funny, like, he just knew that one beat, and he yeah, just kept getting interrupted, so he just had to restart over and over. I mean, it's California, it's Cali Punk, man, what else are you gonna do? Fucking Blink-182. I'll tell you what he's gonna do, he's gonna dress as the Unabomber and go fucking trick-or-treating. Oh, shit. Well, that's an easy costume, though, so maybe. He puts on a jacket and a baseball cap, and... Yeah, they're going to go out trick-or-treating. He's going to take his little sister trick-or-treating. Who's right there to greet him? It's the two shitbirds from earlier. The shitbirds. Yeah. The little shithawks. That's all on all kids candy. Yeah, that's all I have them down as is the shitbirds trying to trying to do their troll toll. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You're right. They got to tax his sack. Uh, yeah, the, the sack tax. Yeah, they want some candy. They need five chocolate bars or we're stealing your sister's sh- shoes too, except they won't fit. Also, they shit. light up. Dude, and this was the point with the virgin shit that it just, it was over the edge. He's like, you're gonna take your sister's candy. And he's like, nuh uh. And he goes, what are you gonna do about it, virgin? And even the sister turns around and goes, yeah, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like gladly handing over. She was like, get bullied like a man. Yeah, you can fucking stand up for yourself. <laughs> you should get some pussy later. <laughs> you, know, you know they're right. You are a virgin, so you should just give them some candy bars. Bullying aside, he, he <laughs> takes his lumps, whatever. I was so confused, yet so enamored by the fact that the sister, whenever she's like, you're a bitch, which she literally says to him, and runs off, she just runs to a random person's porch and begins to sleep cry on it. Yeah, that was a little odd. I, like, I had a moment where I was like, where are we? This isn't their house. Yeah. Yeah, like, from here on out, there's, like, one more scene that takes place in a house that belongs to them. Like, the, really, the next scene that I have written down is when they decide, oh, we gotta, we gotta get the good candy bars, let's go to this rich house, you know, this big-ass house, let's just let ourselves in. So, they unlawfully enter into <laughs> this rich house that, like, there's no signs up or anything, but evidently they're having a party. It just so happens to be the hot girl from class earlier. Yeah! yeah. And there's, it's, it's that party from Oz Wise Shut. Oh, no. There's some fucking long shots of Coochie in that one. Yeah. I, don't think, I, the kids, I don't think the kids need to, like, bro. meander around this shit. Well, I think he does. He might save himself some trouble. Oh, he just, like, trips into something. It's like, uh, oops, inva- oh. invalid target now. Sorry, guys. I can light this candle with no repercussions. <laughs> oops, all bad. Oh, but of course, it's like you said, the the, uh, the girl from class. And she looks like a weird version of Million Dollar Baby. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. I have a, I had her written down at first as, like, teenage Hillary Swank, but, I mean, I feel comfortable enough to say that she's more attractive than Hillary Swank, right? She is 17 in this. We can absolutely cut this out, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like how me and Eric just didn't say shit. Yeah, I was just like, in, in my mind, I was just like, wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so anyway, right? the first thing, yeah. yeah, the first thing that the little girl says to her, though, oh my is God, in, yeah. in her word, my brother loves your kids, but she uses the word wabos. Yabos. Yeah, yabos. It's the 90s. You need like a cool term for everything. Like, no, you just, need to, you just need to, ugh. 
You just need a term that'll get around the censors. That's a good point. It is a Disney movie. Yeah, oh, shit. Like, Woohoo! Kids don't know what a yabo is, but they can assume. You're wrong. But that's the same term actually used in Parks and Rec whenever I don't even remember his name, but he's like, yeah, I'm going to use this to get my wife some bigger yabos. <laughs> Probably a hard reference, but man, Parks and Rec's a good show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So they're cruising uh, around this party. Like, she takes him around. like, oh, yeah, like, the whole town's here. I don't even know who was in the street trick-or-treat with. It's kind of odd that you brought that up. You want to go see some spooky shit and change your mind about this whole ordeal? Yeah, you've, you've uh, had an unlawful entry charge once. You want to have a second one? <laughs> it, it's oh. them, it, instead of them, like, kind of, like, half politely sneaking in, they just, like, burst through the window and shit. It's almost like a B&E. So Jeez, it's like, how? if you fucking call me a virgin again, there's going to be a third unlawful injury. Oh, oh no! no. Um, anyway, so they go to the Sanderson house. And to preface this whole thing, so we do have a little bit of a prologue, right? So we have the three Sanderson sisters. They're up to no good. They're making trouble in this poor dude's neighborhood. And it, it made me laugh pretty hard because the, the kid from like 15, 1600 or whatever, he is just so vaguely British. And I just couldn't get over it. You just, they had, they, all, like, both kids were dressed the same, they had the same accent, they're basically the same person. It's like, uh, Timothy Chalamet if he was just, like, wet all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no. Constantly damp, you know? They just look like a couple of kids about to get snatched up by the Headless Horseman, and I just couldn't get over it. I'm, I'm right there with you. And this abandoned building that they go into, by the way, has no electricity, yet it has electricity as soon as they turn on the lights. I guess it used to be like, you know, a promotional thing. It would be like a, you know, come see the Sanderson Witch House from Salem, Massachusetts. Go to the gift shop. They have oh, Zippo. Yeah. yeah, they do. And you can come and reminisce about that time they sucked the soul out of a kid. Isn't this fun? Power. Um, by sexual energy, so much so that a literal pussy attacks him. Oh, Very true. Yeah. That, that little British kid that I brought up, he's been cursed. So he's a, been a black cat for like 400 years, and I honestly don't know how that works because I feel like someone would have noticed that like, he's just always around. He can fucking talk, and he never talked to anyone? I guess not. I mean, maybe he's really stingy with his awful CGI mouth. <laughs> no, he's just really tough to look at. Yeah. Leave Salem like, alone. Yeah. Like, whatever you think about uh, the animation of Salem and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, this is real worse. Uh, first of all, well, Salem is a masterpiece. That's a fine puppet or animatronic or whatever they were using. It did the exact job you needed to do. This? Fuck, man, I don't know. It's just like they just like stretched the mouth around or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, like if someone the put their. <clears throat> Good. No, never mind. I was just going to make a bad joke about Allison. Oh, oh no. I see. <laughs> yeah, but he does the thing. He's like, it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. Nice. He said the thing. He said the thing. They said the thing. The I thing. ain't got time for this Mickey Mouse bullshit. And he just lights that fucking candle. <laughs> Yeah, she starts reading from the book. It's like, you know, this can only happen when a virgin lights the black flame candle. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Just going to let you. You want to do it? Can, are you allowed to do it? Just checking. Do you yeah. Out? No? Yes? Maybe? We'll see. All right. It'll only <laughs> work when a world knocks three times and says, oh, ye trantor. <laughs> That's the moment. I do have to give him some credit, though. He did use his virginity as, like, a bargaining chip. He's like, you know, only work if a virgin does it. He's like, oh, yeah? Well, check me out. See what happens. You know, he just, he just went for it. Listen, if oh. we don't fuck right now, I'm, yes. bringing three, I'm bringing three bitches into this place, and it's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, either we fucking or we fucked. <laughs> That's good. But, yeah, Marilyn Manson shows up, and it smells like children. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I have Smells Like Children written down. Yep. Very, very Marilyn. Was this before Marilyn Manson Smells Like Children? Before something. Oh, like man, that's where he got it from. It doesn't matter. But you know what it does? There we have it. Our three main antagonists. You got, I don't know, green red-haired bitch, hatchet face <laughs> from Pride Baby, and quarter of the cast from Sex and the City. 
Huey, Dewey, and Louie. We got the the one in red, the one in green, the one in blue. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Or, like, I guess you could go Powerpuff Girls. That's kind of the same thing, too. Ah. The kids are like, oh, no, witches are going to eat us. And they're like, yeah, we're going to eat you. What are you going to do? And the kid's are like, I got magic powers. Check it out. Water of death. And how do you eat a sprinkler? You make a hego face. You're like, ah. Okay, so this is like a 500-year-old house that yeah. they've, like... I mean, really into a business. Yeah, realistically, yeah. they would have had to have messed this house up a bit to put a sprinkler system, like a working active sprinkler system in. They have to know when putting it into this historical building, if these sprinklers go off, it's ruined anyway. Well, I yeah. mean, it could be a possibility that these are very antique sprinklers, you know, from the 16 whatevers. Like Roman aqueducts. Exactly. They didn't show you behind the house when they, in the whole prologue when they had this giant Roman fucking stone thing delivering the water from like 30 miles away. And it was just a kid dressed as a Roman via Ernest. Oh, there there you go. Biggest dickus. So, <laughs> so, Eric, the Ahigo face thing is where Sarah Jessica Parker's checking the water. She throws her hands out, pushes her tits up, crosses oh! her mouth, and sticks her tongue out for the water. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I never knew how to pronounce it, but I know what it yeah. is. Oh, okay. Yeah, see? I... I actually just had the realization of what you were saying. Like, yeah. I've seen that word in print, but I don't think I've ever heard it aloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. First for the both of us. But not a first for our main character. He's a little fucking pissed that these bitches showed up and didn't immediately want to fuck him. Those are facts. To be fair, they're kind of too old for him. They're like 460 or something. Well, don't they just, like, reverse in age when they just start, like, slurping up little kids? Like, little... Halloween treats. Tell that to the judge. <laughs> <laughs> so the little boy and his friend and the child all escape with Rimshot the cat. And <laughs> the witches, they, they go, we fly. They take to the sky upon their Quidditch brooms. I do have to give this movie credit. This is one of the best side gigs I've seen in fucking years. So like, you know, they go to the closet where the brooms used to be. And there's like one broom. But it's been filled with modern shit, so you fucking hatchet face on the vacuum cleaner. That was a fucking good joke. I loved it. I really thought it was funny that Sarah Jessica Parker had a mop for her whack. Bring a bucket in a mop for this wet ass pussy. Oh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> no, don't include that. Uh, yeah, the vacuum was a, was a good sight gag. It was. I'll give it that. Just an aside, what is... You keep calling her Hatchet Face? Yeah. Is that a reference to something? I don't, oh, I don't know. Oh, have you, have you not seen Crybaby with Johnny Depp? No. Tune no. in next week when we do something else. Now, we're talking about the brooms, and I gotta say, the way the dresses flow and the flight animations, these, even now, except for when they do the far shots, these look awesome. You can tell that they're literally sitting on a prop yeah. that is being moved by a crane off screen, and they have like a lot of air blowing on their dresses. Mm -hmm. These look awesome. The movie does everything it wants to do very well. It seems like a very vague thing to say, but like visual effects, minus that fucking cat, is they're good because they're all practical. They're just people on wires and shit, and it's just, it, it's just good. It's, it's nice to see real shit. Always. All right. So this cat leads them off into the cemetery, which is hollowed ground. Witches can't land on it. They can fly above it all they want for some reason, but they can't land on it. And the big idea here is they're supposed to raise the corpse of Billy Butcherson, who who was he? Um, He's uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's ex-lover. Oh who, yeah, who cheated on her with one of the other sisters? Is that right? I wonder, I, wonder which, yeah. I wonder which one, because there's not a lot of good options. I'm just going to put that no, out there. No, there are exactly zero good options. No offense yeah, you, to Matt Midler. But, he's going down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Billy Butcherson, uh, his mouth is sewn shut, so he can't tell lies or something like that anymore. Played by Doug Jones, and he does a magnificent job at literally everything that he does. This yeah, movie. Doug Jones, which everybody knows from Mac Tonight. Alice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, I know him, of course, as Abe Sapien from the Hellboy movies, but yeah. Oh, that was him? <laughs> yeah. 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 
Double damn. Yeah, in the first one they dubbed over his voice, but in the second one they didn't. They used they oh, really? hired Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you see a guy in a movie that's wearing like a really ornate costume that kind of makes him look uh, like a corpse or an amphibian of some type, shape of water, that was him. Uh, he was also what the gentleman in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was like the coolest bad guy. He's all over the place. I'm sure he has some like actual roles that he's known for, but that's what I know him for. Yeah, Mac tonight for the McDonald's commercials. Mac tonight for sure. <laughs> yeah, but they end up like knocking off Billy's head with a twig, and he's like, "Don't run away! I'm a friendly zombie." But they've already ran away. Yeah. I like how this whole movie he's chasing them down just so he can just be like, "Zip, dude, I'm cool." We're yeah, we're friends. Yeah, meanwhile, the witches are roaming about. Uh, they smell children, but all they see are hobgoblins because it's Halloween and everyone is dressed as something other than a child. Oh, oh shit, Mr. T. Oh, did you guys see Sonic? Yeah, I did. It made me laugh pretty hard. It's a <laughs> hobgoblin. I did enjoy the fact that this is like actual lore of witches and stuff, you know, how like uh dressing up for halloween started you know you dress up your kids so they don't wind up eating them because they do think they're like some kind of monsters running around is that for real yeah dead serious and that was the story of all hallows eve i've got an all hallows treat here for you today yes i do this is from almagong brewing company this is all hallows treat it's an imperial chocolate peanut butter stout 7.6 percent alcohol by volume and let me tell you about my relationship with peanut butter and chocolate and beer. That is that I don't like it. So oh, let's no. see if this one's any better. That's a shame, Officer Reese's. Ooh. It actually, <laughs> it actually smells pretty good. It does. It smells like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Damn, I just had one of those. And boy, they still fucking slap. Yeah. So this does have a good amount of chocolate flavor, a little bit of peanut butter flavor, but it's not overly sweet like it usually is with these peanut butter peanut butter chocolate stouts whatever the alcohol level since it is a little bit higher gives it a little bit of a better balance i feel like so this is actually pretty well done it still is fairly sweet but it's a bittersweet chocolate and the peanut butter really isn't overwhelming or anything this is solid i probably won't buy it again but it's it's definitely the best in this genre of beer that i've had Jean. Speaking of best in genre, the costume contest winner is uh, Satan, apparently, because the witches, during their mischievous hijinks, after getting off the bus with Carl Bertanananaluski, they're like, oh, that's Satan. Let's go party with Satan. Yeah, let's go yeah. get Reese's peanut butter drunk. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, master, Satan, whatever you want to call him, the devil. It's just Gary Marshall. They bring him in. Who's sitting there but his wife, played by... Penny Marshall? Hell yeah, I like what they're doing here. I don't know if anybody out there watches enough old TV to even know who those TV people are, but to old people like me who watched a whole lot of Nick at Night growing up, these two are important people. These are the stars of the show. Fuck these people. They can take their goddamn Clark bars and get out. Yeah, uh, Penny Marshall is just like, hey, you dancing with my husband, you know? Uh, do they even still make Clark bars? Yeah, they do. While. Yeah. You would think that, like, Butterfinger and Fifth Avenue would just, like, be like, hey, this this is, like, a worse version of what we got. Can you not? Oh, man. I can, It's probably more heated now. They probably just took him out. <laughs> the round back shot him in the back of the head. Yeah. Nougat went everywhere. Oh, oh no. shit. They clarked him. <laughs> oh, God, look what they did to my beautiful boy. His face was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> There's one little scene. It doesn't matter much, but they run to this cop. He's a motorcycle cop. Oh, and they yeah. they start telling him the story. It's like, he's a, you know, he's a virgin and he lit the black flame candle and there's these witches that are around him and they're trying to eat us and all this stuff. And the cop's just like, wait, so you're a virgin? Yes. Exactly. Ab yeah, like I said it. earlier, every time the movie gets the opportunity to shit on that kid for not getting laid. This and is a Disney movie that is rated PG. They focus a lot on him being a virgin. I was watching with the missus, and this whole time, the cop was laying into the kid for basically just like, dude, just leave me alone. And I was just like, hey, hon, 
Wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if he was just like a dude in costume because it's Halloween? And then it fucking was. I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. That's real he just yeah. hops on his bike. He's just like, let's roll. <laughs> Definitely, let's say, date for the evening and probably not much longer. You know who will last longer? Mom Donna and Dadula. As Bette Midler gets her song time in as she sings, I put a spell on you, causing everyone in the high school dance, whatever, to fucking begin to have this dance off orgy. Now, this is like a town adult Halloween party. Yeah. Like, it's like at the town convention center or something. Mm-hmm. Everyone's invited, but no kids. <laughs> no kids but like i man i was so jealous because i wish i lived in a town where everybody like made their own costumes and had like a really fucking good time it was like everybody was decked out this was fucking cool yeah. until you get your eye poked out thanks mom and <laughs> fucking her madonna titties don't worry about it yeah they're just like <sighs> oil funnels or something <laughs> i don't know they are pokies I appreciate the effort. And I also, it took me a minute. Because, like, when they started singing, I put a spell on you. I was just like, ah, uh, audible eye roll. But, like, you know what? They're still having fun. Uh, that's the perfect song to have on here. It's this, It's something that everyone across, the kids, the parents, everybody can appreciate. Like, it's fitting. It, do, it does what it's supposed to do. And it's a banger. Try and think of a song that would be like the complete contrast. I don't know, Sabotage by the Beastie Boys. <laughs> Just... Yes. Uh, the, the Bum Bum Song by Tom Green. Oh. My bum is on your lips. My bum is on your lips. Oh, the fucking sausage song on his fingers. Oh. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Oh, uh, we. I forgot no, that we did that, that movie. Rip, bad movie. Rip Torn comes out dressed as Rip Torn. <laughs> 10 out of 10. That's not a sausage. That's a goddamn witch from the stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So, so this, this spell that she is casting on them is... She says, dance, dance, dance until you die. Very reminiscent of the dancing plague in France in 1518. They thought witches, <laughs> this is a real thing. They thought Dance witches had a spell on them. Yeah. And they just, this whole fucking town, whatever it was, just danced until they killed over and died. Oh, yeah. I learned that from a Sam Onella video. Thanks, you two. Love that guy. Hey, Sam Onella, you should come back. Start doing stuff again. We yeah. miss you. Yeah, if this is the one channel you're subscribed to, we miss you. Anyway, so there's some kind of a some kind of a lobster recipe where they talk about margarine. All I have down about that is that margarine wasn't invented until 1869. <laughs> so how the fuck do these witches know about margarine? Oh, uh, they went to high school hell. That's how nice. they got a fucking degree in pottery class, but apparently they forgot to make sure that you don't get locked in the kiln. Are you talking about them going all Sylvia Plath? Because that didn't work out. <laughs> To be honest, it was a pretty airtight plan. They get locked in that little furnace thing that gets cranked on and everything, and they just fucking burn. I'm just like, man, I feel like that was kind of solved. Yeah. And the kids did, too. Yeah. I'm so glad they wrapped uh, up this movie in 55 minutes. Yeah. Thank <laughs> I was like, oh, you. Thank this is a Saturday you. evening whatever. I literally wrote, ah, it's over. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> it did feel finite. It did feel like... They realize, like, oh, wait, this is just an hour. How do they get out of this one, boys? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we just come back. Why? Because we can. Someone's going to open up the Kama Sutra, and it's going to produce a Marvel Sky Beam-like objective marker that Sarah Jessica Parker can use to follow directly to the book. Oh, yeah. We didn't. We haven't talked about it yet, but they have, like, this uh, Necronomicon, for lack of a better term. Some Book of the Dead, and... You know, yeah. if we learned anything from the mummy, no, you must not read from the book. And, but fuck it. And somehow it has an eye on the cover that moves around a little bit. I think it's just to give it a little personality. That's all. Just how you know it's the spooky book and not just a spooky book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never an indicator that it belongs to someone. It is just not your dildo it is just the dildo we must always use the definite article a dildo never brady's dildo 
Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, the kids are all happy in their, you know, their success over burning the witches. Um, so they go home. Their parents aren't home for the party yet. It's all right. They're having fun. We're just going to hang out in bed together, you know. There's nothing nothing funny going on under the sheets or anything. So we're Birch. Stay in the other room for a little bit. Yeah. And I, I did love the part where like, they realized, like, wait a minute, something's a little fishy. And she jumps out of bed, and he's still there, just like, bruh. I don't want this to happen again. Please come resolve this thing so I can light all the candles I want. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, resolve this thing. <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm gonna... slow rubbing myself through my pocket for an hour and a half. Don't be now. <laughs> oh my god, I thought that was a Snickers. But unfortunately, you know, they get back on the job. It's like, okay, something's awry. Let's go to the spooky house and see what's going on. And at this point, the uh, the witches have come out and kidnapped. You remember those shitbirds from earlier? <laughs> well, now the shitbirds are in cages where they belong. I was just like, yeah, that, that's exactly what should happen. Yeah. yeah. They get their comeuppance, and Sarah Jessica Parker, as they make this new stew to keep their vitality because they're running out of time, uh, she's like, don't worry, I can lure every boy in a two-mile radius by leaning forward in my broom and pressing my breasts together. Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's maybe a little bit too much of that for a PG. No, sir. Movie, but, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that was, like, her thing, because, like, uh, Bette Midler had, like, the Palpatine zappy powers, and maybe her powers are just... <laughs> just cool. What's the other one's powers? She um, can cook. I, I hope so. Well, she must be cooking up something because they have that big old brew over there and everybody shows up in the same place at the same time because this movie has the movie. That's a fact. We have Billy, who's like a weird Billy. zombie Captain Jack, and he's touching on the kid, which made me feel real weird. Uh, it, like, he's trying to rescue her or something, but it's like hands on the shoulders and he wants to be animated, so he's touching a lot. Yeah... Yeah, it was a little weird. But then again, like, I guess he's a good guy and he just doesn't know how to handle social situations being a zombie for 300 years. Listen, it was a different time. It was a different time. There were different different lifestyle choices. She could have already been married. True. Different strokes for different folks. Come on, everybody. Be sure to subscribe. Oh, man. This is my yikes face. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, I, it, it evolves into, like, a kind of like a showdown where we get, like, salt being tossed and you hear someone yell, <laughs> as Sarah Jessica Parker gets out of the way of the salt. It's, it's a little, I don't want to say corny, but, like, the way they're, like, flying around and shit towards the end, I'm just like, ah, oh, it's not bad. All right, I'm having a good time. This whole salt thing, uh, they talk about it, but it doesn't mean shit, like, at all, does it? No, no. really. Because, like, through this whole movie, they're like, oh, we have this thing that's going to stop him, whether it be throwing him into a furnace or water or what the hell ever. It immediately amounts to nothing. Like, it, it honestly is just like something. It kind of feels like padding, but I don't it, It's probably not. You know, it's the kids just trying to figure out something that they might have heard through lore or a story. Oh, yeah, garlic uh, keeps vampires away when really garlic's like, I fucking love garlic. Please bring me the garlic. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the end of this is literally like I just wrote in parentheses, hilarity ensues. We get some fun little back and forth ass grabbery as yeah. everything resolves itself. I was very confused, though, because they get turned to stone by the sun like some kind of trolls and explode. But the cat gets stoned on the ground and killed, yet the zombie lives. And that was very confusing to me. Well, you see what the filmmakers wanted. They're like, you know what would be really cool for the kids? If we had some really bad ghost effect against a clear green screen. That's what all the yeah. children want to see these days. Yeah, it's high tech, like Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. Like the, the kids are like taking off their aviators all weird, like, but it's like the recorder version. Oh, dude, 100%. As the spirits are freed, just like in earnest, we see as the little girl looks down at the dead cat and goes, Hey, nothing in that tree for me. Oh, oh, oh no. 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 Don't give this that emotional depth. Damn it, Brady. <laughs>
I don't want to say it's like a trope, but you know, they save the day. The the bad witches, they get blown up. All the cursed souls are freed. Uh, Doug Jones goes back to bed. You know, it's fucking, it's a holiday. They did it. Hooray! Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hooray! Yeah, we did it. They're it's still a burden. Their parents are still dancing. <laughs> well, I mean, as soon as they get blown up, I think the curse is lifted. That has been like seven hours. Credit to the movie again, like, through the whole time. They never really go back to the dance. It's just like in the back of your mind, they've been dancing this whole time. So, like, as the credits start to roll, like, it shows the parents start to pour out a town hall, just all fucking absolutely knackered. Super sweaty. All their Halloween costumes are like frazzled and falling off their makeups, running, and they're like, oh, I haven't danced like that since. 1932. Yeah. Like Charleston. Then Daddy. <laughs> and then Daddy was like, "Oh, the hell with it!" Grabs one of the cones. <laughs> the end. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it ends. Doug Jones uh, just kind of gets back into his grave and covers himself in dirt a little bit. It's like, all right, deuces. <laughs> what are you doing, Doug? Rubbing some dirt in it. Peace. Maybe try not to be a virgin next year, right? Ah! Credits roll. <laughs> no, oh, it does that thing where it's like two years later, Billy was still a virgin. Oh, <laughs> oh no. It's like after the credits roll, instead of like whatever rule return, it's just got him. <laughs> yeah. So this movie for me is not anything special. It seems like a lifetime movie and very generic. It has a few upbeat moments where I actually like got a smile. Mostly I was just going, this is Ernest. I'd rather be watching Ernest. Uh, other than that, Sarah Jessica Parker's boobs. Huzzah. <laughs> Huzzah. I thought this movie was a lot more charming than I was giving it credit for before I watched it. I was like, ah, this is just like one of those nostalgic movies for a lot of people, but the Sanderson sisters, those three girls, they're having a fuck ton of fun. And I was having fun watching. The rest of the kids, they're not bad. The movie's not bad. Like, if I were to watch this, like, once a year around the spooky season, I'd be okay with it. I, it's perfectly good. Recommended. Yeah, you use the word charm. I think you're right. This movie's got a lot of charm. It's It would be really good as a kid's movie. It's enjoyable if you're watching with your kids. I don't see anything bad about it. Uh, I mean, they do talk shit on this for being a virgin uh, a little bit too much. Live your life, kid. Do what you want. Just stop lighting candles. But otherwise, I think it's a fine movie. Well, there you have it. That was Hocus Pocus. If you have any strong feelings about the show or the movie, leave in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to hit that little bell icon down there, too, so you don't miss what we have brewing up next. Get out there and follow us on social media. We got Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter. We're all over the damn place, y'all. You can find us anywhere. Podcasts are available, including YouTube. So there's no reason you aren't checking us out. If you don't give us a listen, I'm going to have to get your yabos and put them in your eyeballs. I see them. I see them. <laughs>